Hey, welcome back to Discovering After Effects. This is the 10th and final lesson. Once again, I'm Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. In this lesson, I'm just going to briefly touch on a few of the more advanced features of After Effects, as well as um, kind of a cool technique to turn a still photo into usable footage. And we're going to do that using some expressions. So far, you've learned quite a bit about After Effects. You've learned about the tools and the interface, footage and graphics based compositions, pre comping, tracking, parenting, animating, and everything that goes in between. And throughout this lesson, you may have heard a little bit about expressions. And so here's the deal with expressions each layer has specific properties that you can twirl down. And just about every property has a little stopwatch by it. And that means you can animate it. You already know that. But here's the cool part. If you hold down Alt or Option on a Mac, you can click on that stopwatch. And look what comes up, this little expression editor. So basically, an expression is just a little bit of code that defines a value for this property. And you'll kind of pick it up as you go along. It's not super hard. And if you have any experience with any other kind of scripting, uh, it's going to be really easy for you. So to help us learn some expressions, I'm going to show you how to make some footage out of a still image. Okay, it's pretty simple. So I have a still photo of the side of this building with the sidewalk. And the first thing I'm going to do is drag it into a new comp. And that automatically sets the width and height of the comp to that photo. So here it is. That looks great. And the first thing I want to do is add some shake to this. And so I'm going to make a new composition and I'm going to make it 1920 by 1080, 24. That looks good. And I'm going to call this shaker. So I'm going to take my still photo comp and drag it into my shaker comp. And so I'm going to back out and you can see already that this still photo is a lot higher res than our 1080 comp. And so I'm just going to scale this down and that's going to work to our advantage because what we're going to do is add some shake to this footage. And in real simple terms, this is what we're going to be doing. We're just going to be moving the layer just a little bit to make it look like somebody's taking video with a handheld camera rather than just snapping a still. So I'm going to select this layer and hit P for position and I'm going to hold down my alt key and click on my stopwatch on the position property. So right now it comes up with the default expression, which is transform dot position. So all this means is that on every frame, just look at whatever these numbers say. That's what that means. So I'm going to delete that and replace it with a wiggle expression. Wiggles a really easy expression. If you're like scared of typing things, it's, it's going to be okay. I promise. So, here we go. So I'm just going to type wiggle and then parentheses one comma 20 and then end parentheses. And so that's it. That's the whole expression. And so now we have our footage wiggling a little bit, kind of like a shaky camera. So what does this one comma 20 mean? First of all, wiggle is a word that after Effects recognizes and it just says, okay, I'm going to move something around. I'm going to wiggle something. But then it's followed by these parentheses. And so the first number is frequency. How often do you want this to wiggle? Okay, do you want it to wiggle really fast? Then you'd put like eight or nine. If you want it to wiggle really slow, then you could put one or you could even put 0.1, something like that to make it go really, really slow. So I'm going to put one second. And the second number is the amplitude, okay? So there's frequency comma amplitude. How often? One time per second, amplitude 20 pixels. And it's always in pixels, it's in seconds and pixels. And so it's not super complicated, um, but it's important that you know what these little numbers mean because if you want that camera to shake faster, you're gonna wanna know which number to change. So this already looks pretty good. If someone didn't know that you used a still, it's pretty likely that they wouldn't call you on it. So that's awesome, but what else can we do with expressions? So this is that same photograph, and I just added shake, and then all I did was add some colors to this comp, and then I used that wiggle expression on the transparency so that 
those lights are flickering. And so now it kind of looks like there's a cop car nearby. And I did it pretty quick, so you'd probably want to, you know, make the cop lights look a little better and stuff. Don't be hating. Don't be hating on my cop lights. Um, so I'll show you how I did that real quick. So each one of these layers is just a duplicate of that original footage. And I took the curves and I put a curves adjustment on there. You can do this tons of different ways. But on each layer, I either took away everything but the blue pixels or everything but the red pixels. So I took away the green and took away the blue. And so now all we have are red pixels here. And so if I were to take away the red pixels, it would be black. If I were to push them, it'd be brighter red. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so that's how I did that. And then these all have an expression on the opacity and all it is is wiggle. And then I put nine times a second and wiggle 100 because I want it to flash completely on and completely off and opacity is out of 100. You're always talking about this number right here when you're defining something in your expression window. But you might say to me, Casey, well, what's the big deal? Why would I take a photograph? Why wouldn't I just go there and get some shaky footage? Well, it might be for a couple reasons. It's possible that you're going to want to put something on this wall or put some kind of graphics there or do some kind of compositing where you wouldn't necessarily want to track it. Um, and it's just kind of an easy way to get around tracking. You can, you can also do this with a lockdown shot. You could just shoot it with a tripod, put in your graphics, and then add shake to it so it looks like you did a whole lot more work than you really did. So that's the basic deal with expressions. There's like 8,000 different kinds of expressions, um, and it just depends on what you're doing. And so there's obviously the wiggle expression, but there's also things like if I wanted to add a expression to the scale, I could do something like add random 100 comma random 100 in brackets. And then what that's going to do is just scale this randomly every frame, which might look insane. Okay, honestly, I can't think of a time when you'd use that, but you get the point. And another really cool thing is you can link expressions to values. And so here we have this pick whip. This is the same type of thing that you use to parent a layer. See, same deal. And so you can basically take this little pick whip and you can point your expression to things. And so instead of typing a bunch of things, so maybe I want to set this scale to be the same as my opacity. I can add my brackets and I can put my cursor wherever I want to type and then just pick this value with my pick whip and move it over here and pick the value again. And now I can enter and then whatever my opacity is, that is also my scale. And so you can link things up like that pretty well. And that's a really cool tool to have at your disposal. So you can kind of build your own tools and your own like animation rigs and that kind of thing using these little relationship tools and expressions. Um, a similar thing is you can add an effect. There's expression controls under this effect. There's a bunch of different types of controls, but a lot of the time I'll find myself using a slider control. And all this is is just a little slider that defines a value. And so you could just, instead of saying transform opacity, you can pick whip this up to your slider control. And I'm going to do the same for the x value. So now I can control my scale with this slider. And the cool thing about that is I can link multiple things to this slider and control everything at once. And you can even do things like if I add an expression to my opacity, pick whip it up to the slider control. Maybe I'll say, okay, I want the opacity to be whatever the slider is, but times two. And you can just add that asterisk two. So if I set this to 30-ish, this is going to be 60-ish. And that's kind of how that works. And so you can link up some really cool stuff and hopefully save yourself some time. This is really good for making things like DVD templates and things where you won't necessarily have control of all of the footage and all of the content that's going to be thrown into this comp. You can take a couple minutes, set up some slider controls and some expressions and make it really easy for you to sit down, say with a producer and have them say, I want to change this. I want to change this. I want to change this. And if you're really smart about it, you can control multiple things with this slider and you'll probably impress your producer. 
and you'll probably get a raise. And you know what? I guarantee it because I can guarantee anything you want. You will get a raise if you use slider controls. So, but I'd caution you to get really good at After Effects before you really start messing with expressions because if you don't know how the layers work and how all the relationships go together, you might run into some problems uh, hooking up expressions on things. And so, just a word of advice. Along with that, I want to look at some scripts. Scripts are basically just little files that you can run in After Effects and it can do some pretty cool stuff. And so there's scripts for rendering a composition and emailing it, scaling a composition because that's actually kind of tricky sometimes, as well as tons of other things. But basically, scripts are written by people who probably use After Effects quite a bit and have figured out things that, wow, it sure would be really nice if After Effects automatically did this. Well, now it does because they wrote this script. And so you can run that and they even have scripts that interface with Final Cut. They have scripts that will render each layer separately. They have scripts that duplicate things, scale things. So along with that are plugins. And so Plugins are basically what comes into your effect controls here. And so they have different types of plugins that will do just tons of different things. They have, they have camera trackers, they have time remapping things, they have plugins that deal with lights, particle emitters, and basically just a bunch of third party tools that will let you make your compositions even better. And so here I have Kronos from the Foundry. That's a time remapping tool. Um, Here's also where you'd find your trap code particular, that kind of thing. And this is just a matter of installing the plugin with an installer or dropping it into the plugins folder for After Effects. And whoever you download that from, I'm sure they can tell you how to do that. That's just kind of a preview of some of the advanced things that you can really use After Effects for once you get familiar with the interface. So that's a basic intro to After Effects. Everything that you can do or want to do in After Effects is based on all of these principles that we've gone over. And a lot of the hardest composites and effects are just mixtures of all of these things that we've learned. So, so go out, shoot some video, throw it into After Effects, work with it, get used to the tools. But I think that does it for me as well as our tutorial series, Discovering After Effects. My name is Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.